Hello everyone, welcome back. It feels like a long time since my last update. I had a choice for this one. I could show you either a 10 hour video of me sanding Dowager's hull and slowly getting all the symptoms of hand arm vibration syndrome, or I could focus on a single day from last week. It's probably no surprise that I've gone for the latter of those two options. Firstly, because I think it tells a more interesting story. And secondly, because it gives some good insight into the boat's construction that I might otherwise overlook. So to recap from the last update, I had been dismantling the cockpit area and had uncovered a couple more flooded compartments down below. That led into an investigation to determine the condition of Dowager's hull. Now, the boat's hull is double planked, meaning there's both an inner and an outer layer that's designed to give maximum strength. The outer layer is visible for all to see, but it's the inner layer that's been giving me a cause for concern recently. Peeling back the layers and trying to remove a bunch of buoyancy containers down in the hold to allow a visual inspection is where the fun really starts. And with that said, let's get back to it. These screws are where the board used to be. The whole lot completely rotted. But look at that. That's what I've managed to save. That's the important bit. I'm pretty much in line with the propellers and you can kind of see here where I've done the rough sanding. It's definitely, we've got, it's very oily. I think it's oil that's seeping through the wood here. Uh, this has just started showing through after I've sanded it. And this is the bit that I was worried about to begin with. But this is the only area that I've seen this problem, a little bit more there as well. So I'm thinking if I lift up the stern deck boards that have rotted. That's probably where this liquid has come from. Through the rain just soaking everything through. If we can get that water out and keep it out. I think this is salvageable. Uh, another day, another rotten plywood tunnel. So this is at the stern end of the ship. I think I've taken out all of the screws holding it down though so I'm hoping this one comes up a bit easier than the last oh, ah. okay got a nest of slugs there's always another screw in there got to get all of the, the paint off it just so I can unscrew it. What's happened I think is as the plywood's rotted it's swelled up and it's just hiding all these screws that are still embedded in the timber frame underneath. Another go. Yeah, it's completely delaminated. Oh man, that is a big old millipede. I've just uh, a whole family of millipedes and more screws. This is my high tech picking tool. So many millipedes. Loads of millipedes. Look at that, I can go straight through the entire, the entire thickness of this. 
What the? What is under there? Oh, except for more millipedes. Oh my God, look at those cobwebs. That's like some like Indiana Jones, except uh, you don't get your face melted off at the end. I'm not sure what I'm actually looking at. Okay, those are more boxes. Looks like they've uh, collapsed at some point. Yeah, this is definitely a more recent plywood board has been put in, but that is nuts. Okay, I've given it a good clean now, so I can see a bit more down here. What's interesting is these boxes, initially I thought they were made out of metal just by how they felt. But actually they're, they're lined, as you can see here, they're lined with something and it's wood underneath. So the construction is made is, is wood. It looks like mahogany. It looks like someone stepped on this one to get down in there, hence the damage that's been done. And it looks, it, look, it looks like it could be calico. So I'm kind of hoping it is, maybe that, something that's been used to waterproof it. But just, just in case the lining is is hazardous or contains anything hazardous, I'm just going to have to stay stay masked up. It's quite, uh, obviously with age, it tears away quite easily. It looks like anyway, I mean I haven't touched it. But yeah, that's very flimsy wood. Looks like someone stood on it to get down into this aft section. And it looks like some of the, the old framing maybe has collapsed, which has caused these boxes to shift. And I can, I can definitely see some standing water down there. Calciprees with, with the rotten plywood. But it's good, it's good that the planking that I can see up to now looks pretty good actually. I'm still going to have to, have to go down there though. Have to channel my, uh, my inner Richard Burton. I'm gonna stay on the joists so I don't so I don't break anything. I'm going for the David Carradine experience. God rest his soul. Oh, come on, there's something under here. What is that? Oh. Yeah, it's another, it's another one. Yeah, that is not budging at all. I can feel all around the sides of it. 100% that's not moving. Look at them. It's like the world's toughest game of Tetris in here. <laughs> They're all perfectly shaped. <laughs> I'm sweating like David Carradine. I might be able to get to that one though. Now I've moved this one out of the way. Now give me a look at a sample of the hole. Come on. I can do it. No. quite clever how these boxes are arranged so they're not just square they're essentially rhomboid so by the different angles it allows the boxes even in rough weather to stay exactly where they are so i'm not going to get these boxes out of the way without risking damage to either them or the deck but i've realized i've been going about this all wrong Instead of trying to view the hull from the middle outwards, I should be looking at the outboard areas directly. 
bypassing all of this internal space. And the best candidate area to check a sample of the hull's diagonal planking is a place where the deck panels have already decayed, the port side fuel bay. Okay, the word fuel diesel kind of gives it away next to this inlet, but this is the fuel tank right here. That's some seriously old braided hose there. So that's the tank, that is a beast of a tank. It's a pretty big old boy and it's got one on both sides, port and starboard. That is the skin separating the cabin, the wheelhouse. That down there is bilge. And this is what I was hoping to find. That's the inner planking, a good section of it. And it is in fantastic condition. That's in really good condition. I'm happy to see that. I haven't even seen it. If that's even uh, empty or full. It's got somehow into that bilge. It could be, that could be some fuel in there. Something's floating on the water. Might have it sensible and just mop that up with some, uh, with some oil spill kits. It's a relatively simple method to separate the oil from the rainwater that sat at the bottom. First, you drop some oil spill mats. These are designed to soak up oil while repelling water. Then I let these marinate for a time while I start bringing the boxes out of the stern section. Come on, Burton, you can do this. Oh. You can do this. Getting these boxes out is more delicate than it looks. Some of them had partially filled with water, making them a lot heavier than they should have been. Dropping one of these inside the hull could cause a lot of damage, so I have to be careful. Okay, we've got a problem. Apart from that, twatting me in the nuts. This buoyancy box is no longer buoyant, it's full of water. I'm guessing the damage done to it where it's lost its lining has allowed water to seep through. It's absolutely full of the stuff. I'm wondering though, that might be a drain plug. I may have to drain it out, but just look at the state of that. I was feeling optimistic after I saw the port side. It's full of water again. The worst kind of water as well. This boat's been through a hell of a lot. Managing to get the box on its side allows it to slowly drain into the compartment. While that was happening, I went back to the fuel bay to remove the oil-soaked mats. With the oil now separated, I can safely pump out any remaining water. Come 
Back at the stern, so much water had escaped from the boxes and had to pump out the compartment that it had all drained into. Oh. It was really becoming a battle of wills. A power of grey skull. The largest buoyancy box at the stern was becoming a real problem child. Oh. Filled with water and weighing in excess of 30 kilos, its plug was seized solid. So I had to use brute force to lift it out, something I'm not exactly known for. I'm killing myself over here, I'm going to rip my arms out of my sockets. It's just f***ing impossible for me. But you know what they say about persistence. Okay. Then let that drain. This is nuts. Now I need to stand on the joists, not the hole. Actually, what's that? Is a leak. Can I have a gear mechanism for the uh, for the rudder? I'll have to have a look at that later on. Uh, yeah, okay. We've got bilge and bloody water. Get some spiders in here. Oh my god! I've had nightmares. Could look like this. Bulkhead looks good. Ah, I'll just put my hand on. Yeah, solid, solid. I was worried that the bracings, where they were already loose and had come off, was because the, the framing down here was rotten, but it's not. It was the bracings that had rotted, which is the best, the best case scenario really. It's amazing the condition that this is in. Okay, one out. Ah. Careful, I'm standing on still. <laughs> Busy last few days. That was good though. Let me get this right. Interior panelling that I can see at the bow on the port side in the fuel bay and now at the stern aft. It's all looking pretty good. It's nice and tight. Uh, I can't see any 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 rot. No no gaps that I can see. Uh, some of the corking looks like it's starting to break away, but that's a simple fix. So <laughs> that was that was tough. That was uh, yeah. I don't recommend the David Carradine experience. Carradine, Carradine, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So now I can do the sanding of the hull on the outside without any real fear that the inside layer of planking is just completely rotted. Everything that I've seen, samples that I've looked at, 
it looks solid so I, I think uh, despite all the water ingress I think we've been really lucky touch wood there's plenty of it around <laughs> okay home time <laughs>